Today's demonstration is on Linux Server Administration. So the presumption for today's presentation is that you already have basic understanding of Linux commands like CD, PWD, and other basic commands. We'll learn how to configure services within your server today. And there is a great chance that you have your Linux server hosting web application services and database services. For web application service, Apache is the most popular application server currently in the industry. And for database service, it will be MySQL. So administrating Aperture Web Server is pretty straightforward. To check for any service that's running on your server, you can enter your following. So we're going to do a manual service. So service is a feature that allowed us to check for services running within your server. So we can enter service dash dash status dash all. This will show all the services available to be controlled to this particular command. And then we can enter service aperture 2 status. So this will show us the status of aperture 2. And of course, we can do service aperture 2 stop to stop the web application server. So of course, once it is stopped, of course, for troubleshooting reasons for configuration change, we're able to stop the service, change the configuration files, and then after which we can actually do a service aperture to start again. So, of course, we'll do service aperture to start, to start the aperture web service again. And another way is to use PS aux followed by grab aperture. So this allows us to see the running processes within your server and the grab command actually help us filter the result list. So we see over here that we have different services running from Aperture Web Server. And of course another important server administration command is ifconfig. So ifconfig will allow us to see the IP address of our server. So you can see there is a Ethernet 0 over here. And below we can see the Internet address is 192.168.1.14 the broadcast address as well as the subnet mask. Another important command is we have to locate certain files within Aperture configuration so that we know exactly where is the file for us to change the configuration. So the locate is a great command for us to find files within your file system. So it depends on the version of Aperture that you have installed. So some of your Configuration could be stored at httpd.conf or some of it could be stored as apache2.conf. So another way to verify this is to enter aperture2-v and then you'll be able to see the different kind of configurations available for this build. So the last line that we see over here, dash d server configuration file is the aperture2.conf that we are looking for. So this verifies that aperture2.conf is the file that we are looking for. So of course we can do a locate aperture2.conf and we see on the first line that we have etc aperture2 aperture2.conf so we can do a gedit slash etc slash aperture2 slash aperture2.conf and of course, this will boot gedit and we can see the different kind of configuration options for Aperture 2 Web Application Server. So of course, there are different kind of configuration that you can set on. And of course, you can close this file and you can make the necessary changes. Once the necessary changes are done, you have to restart the Web Application Server through the service command. And now we're going to move over to MySQL database. So MySQL database is a very popular database system that is widely used with many different Linux distributions. So again, same thing, you can use the service command MySQL and enter status to check the status of the service. And over here you see that MySQL is stopped. So you can enter service MySQL start to start the MySQL's database. So it is starting the daemon, MySQLD. And then you enter service, MySQL status. 
And then we see the information associated with this instance of the database. So in order to log into MySQL, you can enter MySQL dash u space root for the username of root. And here we are, we have logged into the database server. And of course we can enter show databases followed by a semicolon to end the command. So we see that there are three different databases within your server. Information Schema, MySQL, and Performance Schema. So creating a database is very straightforward and easy. So all you got to do is enter Create Database, followed by the database name that you want to set. So for this case, we're going to enter Test1, followed by a semicolon to end the command for MySQL. And then after that, you can enter Show Databases again. And over here, you can see the Test1 has been included into your list of databases. And of course, we can perform a drop database test1 followed by semicolon. And this will remove the database entirely from your list of databases. So going back, we can enter show databases. And we see that we have three rows in set instead of four. But of course, I have to create a database table again, the database again. So once we have a new database, we can begin to fill it with information and the first step is to create a table within the database. So we have to enter use test1 to use the database. In the same way that we could check the available databases, we can also see an overview of the tables that the database contains. So we can enter show tables. And then we see that it's an empty set. So we have to create a table within the database. So we enter create table employee bracket id integer not now primary key auto increment so this set that we have a id field that is an integer and it cannot be null and it has its primary key automatically incremented by the system and of course the next field is name so we enter varchar variable character a mixture of variable and character with a size of 20 followed by address again with a variable character field of 30 and of course lastly we can enter a join date which can be the employee join date that we can enter and then semicolon to end the command and hit enter and then you can enter show tables and you see that the list of tables for test one has an employee being inserted into the table list and of course, we can enter describe employee. So this allows us to see what are the necessary fields, types, and whether it is compulsory for us to set it into the set of value into the particular column. So we have to populate the table with data now. So using the insert command, insert into employee ID name address join underscore date hit enter and then followed by values so the first ID will enter as a null and then the next value we can enter my name as the value for name followed by the address of Singapore and followed by the join date of 2016 10 20 followed by the semicolon to end the command and it says query OK, one row has been affected. And we can take a look at the table and its value. So you can enter select all from employee. And you can see that there are value being inserted into the employee table. So now that we have started our employee list, we can address any possible changes. So for example, I have to change the address field. So I can use update employee set address equal Japan where name is equal to my name followed by a semicolon to end the command so of course from here we can do a select statement again 
to see what is the updated value within the table. And then we see that the address for this particular ID has already been changed. And of course, we can remove this particular role from the table. So we can enter delete from employee where name is equal to. So the where function, you can specify any other ID fields or address field, and then you will be able to delete that particular role from the table list. And then now we can view the employee table again, and we see that it's an empty set.